doctor patiently holding after Lord Moncton leaves us here in about 25 minutes or so. Uh, Lord Christopher Moncton, of course, was uh, the top advisor to Margaret Thatcher. He's a scientist, researcher, journalist, uh, ran major newspapers in the UK. He now runs scienceandpublicpolicy.org. He helped prove that Al Gore's film, An Inconvenient Truth, was an inconvenient fraud. Had it basically removed from UK schools because they had to put a disclaimer in that polar bears could swim and penguins could swim and the ice sheets were you know, not disappearing. They've actually gotten bigger and a lot of other big victories. And this is the big globalist push to control and track and tax everything on Earth while ignoring real environmental crises. So I wanted to get him on because his big peer-reviewed paper has come out and is being attacked and demonized right now. I don't want to spend too much time on that because these people are so discredited, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's important. I also want to get his take on geopolitical movements. So if you'll do this, I'll throw a curveball at him, a wild card. In the short segment, the next long segment, he can have the floor uh, in the main. What do you make of BB's speech to Congress? What do you make of this uh, Western alliance with Al-Qaeda calling itself ISIS to bring down Assad, now blowing back so we ally with Iran? And Israel saying they may you know, basically go in and blow up those reactors and then Russia, and I mean, everything seems to be going into high gear. Obama is saying he may raise taxes executively. That is dictatorship. He's banning bullets with executive action that they, is totally illegal. Uh, I, I'm, he's federalizing police. Everything's moving in high gear. Is there a reason geopolitically this is happening? Because it seems in other Western nations things are moving quickly. What's going on, Lord Moncton, in your view? Okay. Two questions. First of all, let's deal with Obama and what he's up to uh, there in the United States, in Washington. Now, what he's doing is he's realized he's lost control of Congress. He knows he's no longer in charge of that. Uh, so what he's doing is he's saying, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make law up as I go along and use the procedure known as the executive order, where I just write a piece of paper saying this is what I want, and that then becomes the law. Now, Congress ought to wake up and realize that, in fact, he doesn't have the power to do this, because Article 1, Section 1 of your Constitution, quite clear, it says that um, no law can be passed by anyone unless it's passed by Congress. Nobody else has any legislative power on their own at all. So he can't usurp the function of Congress unless Congress lets him away with it. And the Republicans need to sharpen their game and start saying, no, we're not going to let the EPA make up rules. We're not going to allow Obama to make up rules randomly. It has to come before Congress or it isn't a law. So that's that one. He's acting as every dictator always does, making up the law when he can't get it through his parliament. Now, as far as Bibi Netanyahu is concerned, whom I know, because I met him in Israel many years ago and I went there as a guest of the government, um, what he is really saying in that speech is a cry for help. He's saying, look, this is going to hell in a handcart because effectively the West has found itself taking sides over and over again with one uh, Muslim faction against another. And then in no time at all, it finds itself fighting on the opposite side. And all the time it is feeding Western weapons in to groups which eventually become terrorist groups fighting against the West. And it's time that this nonsense stopped. Now, of course, he's also very worried indeed about the various uh, nuclear researches going on in Iran, which are clearly not intended so much for civilian use as for weaponizing the plutonium to make bombs with. And he is not going to allow that to happen. And he's made that very plain. After all, it was uh, Israel who previously knocked out the Osirak reactor in Iraq, when it too was working towards weaponizing nuclear material. So he is saying, if you won't do your job, because Obama effectively has abdicated in that region, he is too close to the Muslim side of things to be trustworthy as far as Bibi Netanyahu is concerned. So Netanyahu is saying, I'm going to have to act, to act unilaterally unless you decide that you're going to sharpen up your act and find a more solid, coherent policy for dealing with the... All right, Lord Moncton, stay there and come back and finish that. Then we'll get into your paper, making international headlines, the latest power grabs. We're on the... Go to my Twitter account. I tweeted it a few weeks ago. The latest issue of National Geographic is titled The War on Science.
And on the cover, they say, we never went to the moon. And then next they say, in the war on science, that climate change isn't real. What a nice bait and switch. We always said, Moncton for 20 plus years, that it is climate change, that it's normal, that change is the only constant because of the sun and other factors. The solar winds, the, the list goes on and on, and that's what the science shows. But they get up there and lie and say, the science is in. Everyone agrees, global warming, anthropogenic, man-made. Now the last three, four years, they've segued into change. Change, period. Now we're having record cold in Europe and the United States. It's freezing right now in Austin. Usually by this time of year, it's springtime here. In fact, last week, trees were budding with flowers. Now they're all basically dead because it's you know, freezing here. It's the sun. The sun started to cool off a few years ago. Lord Moncton, but I had astrophysicists on, you name it. Not just Lord Moncton. They said, get ready for it to get cold. Get ready for the ice caps on Mars to get big again. When I had David Rothschild on years ago, I said, why are the ice caps then, that was when the Earth was still heating a little bit, it was about eight, nine years ago, I go, why are the ice caps getting smaller on Mars too? And he said, well, that's because Mars is closer to the sun than Earth. And I said, no, it's the fourth planet. We're the third. And he said, no, it's not, sorry. And I said, are you doing that to be insult my audience or you think we're that dumb? He just started laughing at me. We've played the clip of that many times. It's in my film Endgame. Lord Moncton, they seem to be tripling down now as everything collapses on them and then trying to discredit you and others. Um, finish up with any uh, geopolitical news and then let's get into that subject, please. All right, very briefly then on Bibi Netanyahu's speech. I mean, this is a very important speech. It was extremely well received in Congress. Many, many standing ovations. A lot of excitement about it. Um, and I think this is a very important and very significant moment because Congress has decided to act unilaterally here in a way it hasn't done, hadn't found the courage to do so far. It invited Bibi Netanyahu when Obama didn't. Obama didn't ask him to come, but Congress asked him to come because they are concerned that he simply doesn't have a handle on the Middle East situation, which of course stems originally from the situation of Palestine. It's really Britain's fault originally because it was we who decided when we had the mandate to control that territory, eventually to give it to Israel when there were still a million Palestinians living in it. And that has led to conflict ever since. Now it's very clear what's got to happen. There needs to be a generous financial settlement to those who can demonstrate that they are legitimate descendants of the original Palestinians who were dispossessed by the creation of the State of Israel. That would leave Israel in place, but the Palestinians properly compensated, but they would have to accept as the price of that compensation, that they acknowledge Israel's continuing right to exist and will no longer seek to do it down. Now that's the kind of policy that I think we're going to need to see, and it's actually Western countries that are going to have to pay for that, because it isn't Israel's fault that Israel is there, it's our fault that Israel is there. And so we should compensate the Palestinians for what they have had to endure, the taking away of their territory to create Israel. This is a problem for Palestine. We have to understand that. But at the same time, Israel, after what was done to it in the, before the Second World War by Hitler, Israel also has its right to exist as a nation. And that way you can get both nations coexisting, I hope, in harmony. Something like that has got to be tried. Because otherwise, the conflict between the West and the Islamic world, which has largely stemmed out of the Palestinian conflict, is not going to go away, and it is, I'm afraid, going to get worse. And I'm very sorry about that, because my late father spoke Arabic, looked quite Arabic in some ways, um, knew many of the leading figures in the Arab world, and was very fond of it. And so am I, and it's a, it's a great sadness to see this really unnecessary um, disturbance of the, the former harmony there and the savage treatment in particular of the Christians in Syria at the moment and, and other places in the region where 
hundreds of thousands have been dispossessed or killed and virtually nothing said in the fashionable left-wing press. Well, that's why Bibi Netanyahu is being received so well in Congress, because he is speaking to these issues which the present administration in the United States sure. has nothing to say about. In closing on the subject, why won't the feminists that say a man wearing pants hurts women or that all sex between a man and a woman is rape, literally, why aren't they upset when radical Islamists sexually mutilate women or cut their heads off or kill Christians or put little girls into sex slavery? Why would the left, is radical Islam so sexy and chic? If you go to a leftist meeting, there are folks there just fawning after it. It's so sexy to be in a jihad slave pit. This has always been the way that the media and the left are by instinct not democratic but totalitarian. And totalitarians will always tend to stand together and think as one. And of course, there's the additional factor that uh, Obama has been letting very large numbers of Muslims into the United States. And this is because the first few generations of immigrants from wherever they come tend to vote left. And so the left always have policies which seem terribly tough against immigration, but in fact you always get very, very large numbers of people coming in, and in particular at the moment from the Muslim world into the United States, changing forever, as they hope, the um, terms of trade in voting to make sure that we never really ever get a Republican government again. That's the aim of it. It's the constant movement leftward. And that's why the left... Uh, makes common cause with the terrorists and the extremists of Islam rather than doing what the center-right does, which is saying actually that sort of conduct is unacceptable. All right, Lord Moncton, um, good analysis on that front. Let's segue into the latest on the carbon taxing, uh, how they're responding to record cold temperatures, record thick ice sheets, record numbers of polar bears and penguinos. Uh, what's uh, happening on that front? Well, let's first of all, you're quite right about this. There are seven times as many polar bears as there were in the 1940s. Hardly, as you may think, the profile of a species is imminent threat of extinction. And yet the Worldwide Fund for Nature, so-called, which is another communist front group, has put out a, a, an advertisement in the United Kingdom which doesn't appear on their website because they don't want people actually getting the text of it and then making complaints about it, which says that polar bear numbers are in decline. Well, they're not. They're, they're growing very rapidly because... At the Arctic, it has been a little bit less warm than it had. There's been a little bit of a loss of ice there, but it's been more than matched by a gain of ice in the Antarctic. And overall, just a few months ago, for the time of year, there was more sea ice globally than had ever been measured in 35 years of the satellite coverage. You will not see that in any mainstream news media. You will only see it on Alex Jones. But the fight back is now even beginning among the scientific community. The paper that I and, sir, and three distinguished colleagues, uh, Professor David Leagate, Dr. Willie Soon, and uh, Dr. Matt Briggs, published um, in January in the Chinese Science Bulletin, is the most popular paper in terms of the number of downloads that that distinguished journal, it's the oriental equivalent of science or nature, has had for any scientific paper published in the last 60 years of its archive. In fact, it's had more downloads than the others by just about 10 times over. This has proved to be a very popular paper because it's actually quite a simple paper. What it does is to set out an irreducibly simple climate model, which is a way of looking at the climate. And what you can see in the paper is that when we ran that model for the first time, the answer it gave was exactly the rate of warming that we've in fact seen over the last 30 years, whereas the official models are predicting twice as much warming as has actually occurred. Now, this paper is a phenomenon. It's of great concern to those who are trying to say at the UN's climate conference in December in Paris, where they hope to inflict a world government treaty on us, the one they, they failed to do at Copenhagen. They're going to try again. The Chinese blocked the Copenhagen one. The Chinese have been squared by, as of course, Obama this time. He went over there and said, look, please don't wreck the treaty this time. We'll let you out of it. You can go on emitting as much CO2 as you like. That's right. They never comply with any of it. They can build all the new plants they want. Pachari can in India, even though he just lost his position, we can talk about that. It's only on the West that these cuts are made. 
That is absolutely right. And what is interesting is that, that China has been given a specific exemption so it doesn't have to cut its emissions at all. Now, the point about that is that China is now far and away the largest emitter of CO2 on the planet. So if CO2 were a problem and you were wanting to control it, the one country you wouldn't let out of this agreement is China. And the other one that you've just mentioned that you wouldn't let out is the second largest emitter, or soon will be, and that's India. And so what they've really said is in order to get some sort of a treaty through, they're going to have to exempt the people who are now the major contributors to the CO2 in the atmosphere. That's how dotty it has all become. But the reason why they're pushing for this, desperately pushing for this treaty, is they now know the science has collapsed. Our paper, among others, tells them it's collapsed. But they can't admit it, and their only way of not being shown up as having got it as badly wrong as they did is actually to bring CO2 concentration down to zero so that when, as they now know it would anyway, the temperature fails to rise, they can say they did that with their heroic cuts in CO2 rather than that it wasn't going to happen anyway. But, of course, this paper has provoked outrage and screaming fury on the left. At first, they tried to poo-poo it, saying that the journal it was in was insignificant, then they discovered it is the Journal of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the largest such thing in the world. Then they tried various very dopey attacks on the science, which fell completely flat because most of them had plainly not even read the paper. So then, when all that had failed, they decided to attack Dr. Willie Soon, who is my very distinguished co-author of this paper, who's been a, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics for the last 25 years. And they had the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe, all the left-wing mainstream media wrote lying pieces saying that he had a conflict of interest in that he should have declared he was funded by fossil fuel interests when writing our paper. Well, he has, as many scientists have had, funding both from governments and from fossil fuel interests in the past. However, at present, at the time he worked on our paper, he wasn't being funded by anyone. But, but, but let me so just interrupt they, you for a moment, please, because huh. I follow this, and, and we always defend yeah. ourselves. I've never gotten any fossil fuel company money, but I also follow the news for 23 years, 20 years on air. Huh. Most of the big oil companies, like Dutch Royal Shell and BP, are some of the biggest funders of climate change baloney. Exxon Mobil, eight years ago, Rex Tillerson was put on notice, it was in the news, that he would get behind it by David Rockefeller or be removed at the board meeting because David came and exercised the fact that he was the majority owner of it since it was busted up with the uh, Sherman Antitrust Act in 1906. And, and so the, uh, that raised its ugly head, the robber baron money, and the fact that, uh, in fact, there's the headline, fossil fuel industry caught taking a page out of the tobacco playbook. So they're, they're spinning it that uh, that it's the fossil fuel companies doing this when 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 you could go into any university and find a department where something's going to be funded by one of these industries and then supposedly discredits it the truth is you look at the hide the decline people and you look at climate gate and you look at pachari and all these players and al gore owning one of the climate exchanges and obama invested in the chicago exchange i mean it's a total joke they are the most conflicted group of anybody and I'm just sick of the red herring that's all they've got is all scientists agree with us and when you show that most don't they go well you're all paid off by oil companies it's just this insane is it. I mean, it is it is it is completely outrageous something like I think it's 5,000 times as much funding goes to true believers in Thermageddon, this new religion, than to those of us who are skeptical. I mean, nothing comes to me at all. I very occasionally get a speaker fee here and there, but nobody pays me to do my research into the climate. I'm all, always being asked that. The left are always trying to catch me out, saying, who's paying you? Well, why are they allowed to be paid, but then you aren't? I think it's because governments have decided for various reasons of extending their own power and reach and getting more taxation and, and uh, regulatory power that they want to back this story whether it's true or not. I've had this from several members of the Conservative Party in Britain, which is the ruling party here. They know perfectly well it's rubbish, but they also find it very convenient as a way of keeping the taxpayer in his place. So there's a large element of, sort of totalitarian suppression of freedom and transfer of wealth 
from the little guy to the big Sure, guy. it's a giant power grab, but I mean, is it this That's good exactly. that they're forced to look at your paper? Doesn't this show you're having a big effect that they're trying to discredit it? I think the, fa the fact is that they, they are furious because what I've done is I've said, look, you can have a simple climate model, so simple you can run it on a pocket calculator, and that model shows we're not going to get all that much warming. Now, what, what worries them about that is that if, I proven, if I'm proven to be right, then a lot of very searching questions are going to be asked in 30 or 40 years' time about why so many trillions were spent on the basis of these huge climate models that simply got it wrong. And if you want to see this paper for yourself, because it's a Lulu, there's a lot of very good material in it. As you can see, it's flashing on the screen now. Uh, you can go to scibull.com, scibull.com, rather unfortunate uh, moniker for their website. And then just click on most read articles, and we are number one on the list and please do that because the more people download this paper the more the left will take note that no longer are we sitting back and just letting them control the journals we are getting in too of course the left have been furious at the science bulletin for running this there's been a lot of complaints about willie soon having not declared his conflict of interest but i wrote to the editors and said look this has arisen and here is the answer none of us was paid a single cent to do months of work you know a scientific paper is not an easy thing to do it takes a lot of work to put it together we were not paid a single cent by anyone to do that so the editor very kindly accepted that and has been sending my letter out to all the complainers saying well look actually there isn't any money that changed hands here and it's a perfectly good straightforward paper so why well don't you that's just it? like when brian Perfect. williams gets discredited they change the subject to bill o'reilly and i'm not defending bill o'reilly he's even yeah. promoted this nonsense the point is they want to change the subject by demonizing somebody to get the attention off of them when the fact that the ice sheets are getting bigger and that it's so cold People know this is bull. Then they learn that... There's been no global warming for 18 years, according to the RSS satellite data set. No warming for about a decade on any data set. And that's certainly not what they predicted. We've had... Um, uh, sea level hardly changing at all, according to the Envisat satellite in the eight years it operated. The GRACE satellites, which are the gravitational recovery satellites, probably now the most accurate way of measuring sea level, actually showed it falling between 2003 and 2009. Sure, sure. It's a giant power grab, and you're the champion of exposing it, and we'll continue to get updates from you. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. You can go there and link through and find the paper. Get it out to everybody you know and get in their face. It's all a big power grab by George Soros and others to literally tax everything humans do. Lord Moncton, Godspeed. Many thanks. God bless.